It's a proper dirty, filthy job and someone has to, needs to do it. This morning, Wayne Martin from Catishack and his good friend Matt Lower are on pigeon patrol. They're covering two farms with multiple barns used for machinery and cereal storage and livestock housing at different times of the year. These are also the perfect places for pigeons to call home. The girders provide wonderful roosting and nesting sites from where the doves, from above, poo a lot. I think there's a pigeon problem here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the state of it. Have you ever seen anything like it? I mean, God, that's got to be three inches deep in poo. Three inches deep. Uh, and you can see where the girder runs through the centre, where they just poo off of each side of the girder. The, girder, <laughs> the, clean, the, girder, the clean girder through the middle and then just piles. <laughs> and there's flies on it, the, you know, the germs, the filth, the dirt. You, you can see why they've become a real problem. You know, they're, they're pretty to look at. Yeah, they're nice to have a couple around, but they quickly become a problem. We start our outing where we've hunted ferals and pheasants in the past. Wayne and Matt warm up with some practice shots. Before we embark on this, is it always important to get a few shots under your belt? I feel it is, yeah, personally. Um, from day to day, weather changes. So today is quite warm, bit of a breeze. Uh, yesterday was very hot. So in the hot, hot weather, your bands will perform a lot faster. So you'll have less hold over at distance in the hot weather. So I like to just get a feel for my bands, bed myself in. It's much like having a pool shoot when you go clay shooting, you know, you, you're stiff, you want to get the gun moving, you want to get the gun swinging, familiarise yourself with connecting with the target, lots of things. So that's what we're doing here really, so have a bit of a warm up. They don't want to go straight into shooting game when you're not feeling 100%. You want to get your accuracy, get your confidence in, and then go hunting after that. Trusty chalk. When the, when the, that's it, when fingers get a bit, a bit nervous with the pressure of the camera, start sweating. <laughs> Put it anywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just by coming inside here and obscuring ourselves to the birds, obviously gets us, gives us a chance to get close to the birds without them actually watching us and seeing us. The birds are presenting themselves in, in such a way, the same as last time, they sat down very tight. So you've got a very small area to aim at, like I said, like a kill zone. So again, Using the larger setup gives you more room for error because the head is sat tight on their body. So because you've got head, body, you've got no sort of range, if you like, for a good, good head, head and neck shot. It's literally head and body, so they're really tucked up tight. So the heavier setup obviously does more damage, more likely to bring them down um, clean. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just got so much energy taking through it. Yeah, it's just gone clean through it. You know, I pick them up, I always like to sort of, well, we flip and flap around. We've said it before, I say it every time, but the animal's not alive, you know, it, it's dead. It's broken neck, it's, it's game over, you know, you can see. Mm. Wow. Practice paid off then. It did pay off, didn't it? What was that, what we had there? Eight, 16 metres, something like that? Maybe a bit more? Yeah, definitely. Time to get up there. It's a lot further. Yeah, probably. So yeah, it's uh, like I say, next shot. A heavier, heavier setup. What was that? Sorry, my adrenaline's going. I always get yeah. adrenaline. I do. I always get adrenaline <laughs> when it's, this type of hunting. This is why I love it. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's so raw. It's, it, it always gets my adrenaline going. Even shooting something like a pigeon. You know, no matter how many times I do it, every time it's like, like the first time. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry, what were we saying? Back in the room. Back in the room. <laughs> you, you said before you took the shot, you were using a heavy setup. What does that actually mean? Um, a heavier setup would be like a stronger band and larger ammo. A lot of people, or some people, they like to hunt with smaller ammunition 
um, you know, and just headshot only. Obviously, everyone always goes for a headshot only, but it's not always possible. Like in that position there, you know, the birds were sat up very tight, heads were down on their body. So if you hit this something, you know, effectively, if the head sat on its body, you know, you've got, with a smaller setup, you've got that area as a kill zone, yeah? So, mm -hmm. but with a heavier, stronger ball and band, you can hit it here and go through this, this part of the body, this part of the wing, and still hit a vital area. So what ball did you actually use? Uh, 11 millimeter lead. Okay, all right, cool. Are you calm down yet? Are you still a, buzzing? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> 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 it just gets what I love catapult hunting. I just, it gets me every time. Do you get that excited, Matt? Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> What did you say? Oh my God! Sorry, because I jumped the camera in your face. <laughs> oh yeah, it so, yeah. is. A, it is a skill, especially when, obviously, Wayne's um, practice paid off, unlike mine. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe you're just blinded by the white pigeon. Maybe that was just. It was just too much of a. Yeah, the sun in my flare, eyes coming flare, through the roof. Flare off it. Yeah. But no, do you get that sort of same adrenaline? <clears> or not? I mean, I do get that adrenaline compared to shooting a shotgun or a rifle because it's a lot more skilled. Yeah. So when you hit things, it's, um, it is, it's a lot more of a buzz. Who would have thought that hunting with a catapult would give you feral fever? With nothing more sitting for us, it's off to the new permission. It's never been shot. The birds here were originally decorative pets. Now things have got out of hand. A few sit on the edge for Wayne to target first. With shooting upwards, anything you've got to bear in mind? Um, obviously the, the fallout of the shot, which is why we positioned ourselves, positioned ourselves where we were, because we know over that angle there's a, you know, it's the bare field to where our shot's going to fall out. When you're shooting upwards, something may be 15 metres away upwards, but it may only be, say, four or five metres away distance. So what we have to take into account is although it's 15 metres away, you may not necessarily have to shoot above it, because the, the for the act of gravity because it could only be four meters away so you're only getting the effect of gravity of a four meter shot even though it's 15 meters okay so it's quite a lot of people will shoot high when they're okay. shooting above when they're shooting upwards they'll shoot above things yeah. because they're taking the shot as a 15 meter shot mm. whereas in fact you have to look at the distance the bird is away from you on a flat on a flat plane as opposed to the distance it is on an upwards plane okay sort of get it <laughs> wait for them to settle down a bit Stone dead through the neck somewhere. Oh, there we go. Crikey. Straight through the centre. Great shot. Thank you. Just underneath the eye, straight through the neck. Here, there's the shot there. We're putting out around about 11 foot-pounds of power, uh, which, you know, is the same as sort of any kind of regular air rifle. But the, obviously the difference with this is we're going through with, with an 11 millimetre ball. I'm not sure on the sizes of a 177 or a 22, but they're certainly not a 11 millimetres in diameter. And the amount of damage that creates as it goes through is uh, obviously a far greater amount of damage than an air rifle. That's basically. Yeah. Okay. A few more sitting there for us. Yeah, there is. Yeah, we better crack on because they want them all, or as many as possible, cleared out for obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? Terrible. I've never seen anything like it. You can see they haven't been touched for ages. It's not how you treat your car, is it? Oh, no, not my baby. <laughs> <laughs> is that your car, Matt? Yes, yeah, my uh, weekend car. <laughs> <laughs> Polish that out, didn't you? Isn't it sell it bang, bang. Sell it bang. <laughs> Boom, the dirt's gone. Right? <laughs> As they're sitting, David tries to capture some of the shots in slow-mo. As usual, the higher frame rate exposes the devastating power of a well-executed shot. Matt and Wayne are just shy of double figures. Matt gets a left and right to finish us off. Shot, shot, good shot. Here, yeah, try and clear the other one up here. Oh, oh, he's down. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's gone straight through. And gone up into there, so so it was sat straight up through and then into there. It's so obviously where we've shot it from the, underneath. Yeah, into the head. The ball's travelled up through and blown the fur off the neck by the look of it. As it's gone up, travelled up through. You can shoot them, way. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's a fair, Matt's a fair shot. I've got to give not, him credit there. I'll give him credit. Me now. I'll <laughs> get, uh, what, I'll get, what's that to be scared of? I'll, get very, I'll get very nervous. <laughs> Feel the pressure. <laughs> With the birds now a little more careful, we call it a morning and waste not, want not. Although not the best for human consumption, Matt makes sure the birds are put to good use. Ferals are on the ferrets menu this evening. For more information about the catapult range that Wayne produces at Catishack, go to catishack.co.uk. To check out the Jack Pike Digicam range of clothing, go to jackpike.co.uk and to read about Wayne and Matt's slingshot setups, check the description below.